Step 1. I've got a number 10 three extra long shank hook in the vise. We could use a smaller size number 12, larger size number 8 to tie the same pattern. I'm using a dot pre-waxed light olive tying thread to form a nice neat foundation. Step 2. I've got a piece of lime green super stretch floss which I'm tying in just at the bend of the hook for the ribbing on the fly. Step 3. I'm taking some dubbing wax here to form a bit of a foundation to lay my dubbing. We're taking brown olive synthetic seals fur which will form the body of the fly. See that uh, makes it stick to the thread, does it? It makes it stick to the thread and and as we spin it we can get a fairly tight blend formed. What part are you making right now? We're making the body of the fly. We're going to wind the dubbing up about three quarters of the way up the shank of the hook. Definitely has a sparkle to it. And I think that is one of the attracting features to this fly. Step four. Now we're taking our bright lime green rib and we're going to apply the segmentation to the body of the fly. And this bright lime, lime green rib really is one of the key features to this fly. Why is that? Is that uh, how they actually look? Yeah, many of the Stillwater caddis species you see in lakes have a very distinct uh, bright green ribbing through their, through their abdomen or body. Step five. Now we're going to take about seven or eight fibers from the center tail of a cock ring neck pheasant which will form eventually the thorax of the fly. What are the proportions of the thorax in relation to the body? The thorax will be about a third of the way back or the front third of the fly. So I'm tying the fibers in just behind the eye of the hook and I'll bring them back about a third of the way. Step six. I've got about six strands of regular peacock curl, which I've tied in, and they're going to form the thorax of the fly. Does the thorax actually spark like that on a caddis, or is that just a tractor? Uh, no, it's just more of an attractor, a natural attractor feature. Step seven. And we're taking a rump feather off a cock ring neck pheasant and we're pulling off some of the fibers to form the side legs or the legs of this fly. Notice you cleaned out some of the other small fluffy stuff. Eh? Yeah, cleaned out the, the fluffy shorter stuff to try to get fibers that are more even in length. So these, these fibers are being placed on laterally or on the sides of the fly. Step eight. And we're going to do the same on the other side of the fly. Same feather, fibers, and lay them down the side. Is there any particular way that they, they lay in there? I notice that the feather has a curve to it. Do you want that to lay in, in in a specific manner? We're trying to use the natural curve to be flowing back towards the bend of the hook. So in towards the fly as well. That's right. Clean it up there, I guess, eh? Step nine. And now we're taking a sm small cluster of peacock angel hair material to form a throat on the fly. It's just, just a bright, shiny material, even though the real caddis pupa doesn't have a throat. This seems to add a lot to the fly's success.
step 10. Now we're going to take the pheasant tail fibers and pull them forward to cinch down the shell back. In case you want that pretty snug. Yeah, and you can see I'm giving it several good wraps there. Step 11. And then we're going to take a couple strands of peacock curl to form the head of the fly. And I'll take the tying thread and wind it through the peacock curl to kind of cinch it down. So you're pulling the head back there just to keep it all tight against the thorax? Yes. Step 12. And now we're taking our whip finisher to give us a nice, even, clean head on the fly. Do you uh, like just giving it about four wraps? That's about it? Four or five wraps is about all we normally have to, to do. And here we have the finished Stillwater Caddis Pupa. That's way too much work. I'm buying mine. <laughs> I hear you.